this is a story time per request about myself so i'm gonna do my entire upbringing from then to now from baby to now <sighs> i already recorded this entire video and i had to delete all of it because my editing apps are not working so i have to make sure that i get this all in one swoop so i can put it up unedited instead of clipping it so i'm gonna try to do that to the best of my ability because at this point i've had it up to here with all of the mishaps that keep happening okay but i rebuke having a nervous breakdown so i'm gonna try to get through this video as stress-free as possible but i'm really going through it i'm really going through it okay i was born in jamaica queens hospital and then we moved to brooklyn my parents broke up when i was very young they were married but then they got divorced and it was just me and my mom at first we moved from room to room in brooklyn and queens kind of went back and forth um, and then we moved to the bronx for seven years before that i went to a preschool called clc it was christian life center and then they changed it to christian cultural center that was our sunday church and also my preschool fast forward we moved to the bronx and we lived there for seven years. That's where she had my younger sister. My dad has four daughters and my mom has two. I'm the oldest of five sisters. And when we were living in the Bronx apartment, I was having dreams of singing and dancing and being a pop star and a fashion designer and an author and all of that. And I was able to sing. And then when my sister was born, I all of a sudden couldn't sing anymore and she was the singer and I kind of started to give up my dreams and started to focus on other things mm -hmm. and when fast forward we moved out of the we had to move out of that apartment and we had to leave all our stuff behind that was a bit traumatic having to leave all our stuff we had to put our stuff in storage and then we moved to another apartment in the Bronx. All of our stuff got lost in storage, including my baby book, which to this day I wish I still had and all of my dolls and stuff. Anyway, so then we moved to, so then I went to PS130 Elementary School in the Bronx. I went to IS184 Middle School in the Bronx. And then I went to, um, Fashion Industries High School, which is the high school that she went to. And then um, she also went to FIC, the college to the school, but I didn't go to the college. So I met my first girlfriend in high school in sophomore year. We fell in love and I started to not care about school. I started smoking cigarettes. I started smoking weed. I started drinking in the bathroom. We started cutting class. I remember telling my friend, um, I'm going to turn my life around. This is going to be it. Like, I'm going to do my homework and all that. And she was like, girl, do you know it's the last day of school? I was like, stop playing. I, my heart dropped to my toes. I was like, no way. I was shook. So that's how bad I was doing. So my mom forced me to move to Florida. And then I finished out high school in Florida. This is my daughter, Matrix, by the way. Um, finished out high school in Florida and the girls in Florida were very mean um, they were not feeling me so in high school in New York I was wearing heels every day my friend Richard he was gay he was wearing my heels it was so fun I hope he's good um, it was like fashion everything we used to go to the pier it was the gay scene in the pier so we would like dance and do runway shows on the tables and um, walk around it was awesome so fast forward I still kept that style when I went to Florida but in Florida it was a different thing it was like not that and so then all of a sudden the girls started dressing like me with some of them even though they hated me because their boyfriends liked me and it was just like I felt like a complete loner so luckily my mom worked at the school and I kind of had her there um and um I would go like see her in between classes just to like breathe and so I left that school and I went to a um uh fashion I went to a art college and then after a while, I stopped caring about that. And I just started partying and bullshitting. <laughs> um, and it was really, really dope. And then around that time, one of my alters, who was actually um, Jesus's 
um altar i'll get into that later videos about double what? altars but so but that was like the suave version of him and a lot of girls was kind of like attracted to that so i had a lot of girls like kind of drawn to me and it was like my little poppy face and it was like really dope <laughs> so after that i ended up having a lot of traumatic experiences and so it was time to move back to new york and when i did i got into a new york nightlife scene and that's when i started to become a go go dancer and i was a model and i started to do um some acting there too i remember my first movie was a movie with anne hathaway i was just an extra but i got to like walk past her <laughs> and i saw how focused she was on like remembering her lines and everything which was really really cool to see how intensely um responsible to her craft she was like she made sure she didn't speak to no one and she was just like very focused and i i, I loved that um so anyway um so then i um i produced my own sh um party it was called hush and it was like a vampire party it had jello blood shots and i got all the the, um, the performers together and the DJ and everything and it was amazing and then I did another show but then that one didn't um, go as well as the first one because of sabotage and so after that you know you live and you learn the first one was at Warsaw in Brooklyn and um, it was really awesome I need you to relax please I need you to relax play with this so then um, so then so then um, I stayed in the nightlife scene for quite some years and then I left in 2015. Around 2014, I met my ex-best friend. We're no longer friends, but um, we were friends for seven years. We were in a relationship for a few months in the beginning of those years, but then some guys told her, you know, aren't you straight? And this and that, they got in her head and she broke up with me, but we stood best friends against my choice because I knew that I was going to be heartbroken because I was still going to love her all that time. And I did, and I wanted to marry her and have a family with her. And she, I was the only girl, woman, whatever, that she loved, but she was still very much hung up on her, you know, what she wanted for herself for her life and i totally overstood that and i wanted to support that so i was like you go do that you know so um but during the interim of our friendship um kanye saw her at fashion week and wanted her to have her hairstylist which was me because i was doing her dreadlocks at the time put my locks on his models but she made an executive decision on my behalf not to do that um didn't tell me until a year later and told him no because he wanted to put my locks on white women and she was not feeling that but i am mixed and i would have said yes had she told me but she made an executive decision which was not her place to do so and so moving forward um a lot of things like that has been happening in my life and i really would like to speak for myself and not have no one speak for me on anything relating to me or my business inquiries thank you very much so anyway outside of that we ended up at the end of the seven years not being friends um, when I got with my child's father. Um, but before that, um, I had a, um, a series of things happen where I was, um, around the time that I was friends with her also, I, we got into an argument because she had got, brought this guy to her house the night that I was supposed to spend, spend the night at her house. And I wasn't really feeling his energy and you know I had to respect the fact that that was her house but I kind of got into a mental episode and ended up leaving and got with this other went with this other woman to go find some safe place to stay and then she was and she was partying at this hotel so I ended up partying with her and we were doing libations and I ended up having a gun put to my head in that moment and um, that's when I became extremely more fearless um, and um, I was like I can conquer anything I didn't know who I was at the time um, Around all this time, we were, um, I had moved to Florida with an ex-girlfriend and then had to move back to New York. We were homeless in Florida. We broke up. I had a submissive at the time. He helped me move to back to New York. I hope he's okay too. Um, I really think about him sometimes. We're no longer in contact. Um, this is back when I was a dominant. Um, I'm definitely moving more into that lately because I don't really feel safe to be a little for numerous reasons but you know if I'm safe my little space will probably come out but as of lately um it just yeah that's a long story I'll probably do another video for that but um so anyway um we we pretty much um I moved back to New York and then I was working at an office job 
back and forth. I was an office manager. The office team there was so, um, like, they felt like family. That was the only time that I ever felt like coworkers were like family. All other times felt awkward in any other place. So I really hope that they're all doing well. Um, I ended up working at a strip club for like a month. It was called Show Palace. I went there to support my friend. She was going to work there and her friend, but they decided that it wasn't for them. And I decided to try it out. I liked it, but then I, I left because I forgot why I left, but I ended up leaving. Um, and so then I was going to do porn also around that time and also at a later time when I had to move to Vegas, but um, that didn't work out either. I was even going to sign a contract to do like this CD in the Netherlands and it was going to be dope, but I decided... Also, I forgot why, but I was like, mm, maybe not right now, or maybe not, maybe I don't know, no, meh, mm, ah. So, um, we, uh, I was going back and forth between um, New York and everything, and then around that time after the hotel incident, I moved to Oregon. A friend of mine was like, look, my boyfriend and his friend wants to go grow weed in Oregon, and I need some female support in there because it's only going to be me and some dudes. So can you come move here with me? And I was like, yeah, sure. I need a place to stay anyway. So it was really, really a good like trade off. And so that was in Oregon and I lived in like this mini mansion and that's where I got my first truck. My submissive paid for it and it was like 700 and something very cheap. It was a Ford Explorer white and um, but it was it had a lot of issues with it. And I didn't realize that until one day the brake pads went out and I had to go trade it in. I traded it in for a white Ford Focus. Now, I know Ford Focuses are like basic, but mine had horsepower, okay? I was out. I loved to drive, and I had two cross-country drives in it from L.A. to New York and back, and it was amazing. When I say it's nothing like a cross-country drive with, this, with the windows down and the music blasting and you just see nature and panoramic view around you, it just was everything. I miss those so much. So anyway, fast forward when... I had moved back to California. I had to stay with someone. I was doing a bunch of acting things also. Um, I had met Shamar Moore on the SWAT. I had um, met, um, when I was in New York, before moving to California in 2016, I was working at a magazine called um, Imagista, and I was the content uh, manager there. I was doing the back ends of the website, and I was running the 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 online media of the website and i was assisting with fashion shows and i had met laverne there and she was really dope before that i had met brandy at an fye store and she was like oh girl your hair is everything everything and more <laughs> she was really sweet and um anyway fast forward i then moved to california in 2016 ended up nannying for this woman um, they re named Ray Rasmussen. She was like an ex-model. She was friends with Quentin, Tar Quentin Tarantino. So I ended up going to his house. I was so shocked to be in that space. Ended up spending the night one time and um, going over my lines for this film that I was in called The Valentine Story. And I remember spending the night in his guest house and I was thinking about how many greats have slept here and have done the same thing that I'm doing right now. Kid you not, the next day, I remember all my lines with no problem. I felt like an initiation because I had slept there or something. I don't know, but it was so awesome. And um, he was dope. He would like watch movies all day and like dissect the movies and like pick them apart to see what he liked and what he didn't and how he could be better. And I think that was really awesome. Somebody else who I would notice that was very into their craft. And I could see why he's such a good director. Um, so I then... Um, I had to not work with her anymore because I had let someone else influence me to do something that I should not have been doing, knowing that I had to watch her baby that night. So I was a little bit inebriated and that's when I realized like when it comes to, that's when I learned like moving forward, when it comes down to handling business and being serious, I'm gonna not get inebriated when I have to work and I'm gonna make sure I save that for afterwards. That was when I had really learned my lesson with that. Um, Cause I could see how that could throw you way off. And so, um, it's nothing wrong with getting inebriated, okay? I love it. But oh, you got to do it when you're not working so you can be responsible. Well, for me. For me, anyway. I'm not trying to speak for nobody else. But for me, that that was what was going to be best for my life. So, that was the last time I had done anything like that when it came to working. Um, so, I left there. But by the, around the time that I was working with her, we went to this art gallery and I met Rachel True. And she called me a goddess. And I was like, living. I was like, oh my god. Like, I love to <laughs> on half and half. Like, you don't even get it. <laughs> so um, she was really sweet. So anyway, we left there. And that right after that, I kind of, like, stopped working for that person. And then um, I was bouncing from place to place with friends to friends. And um, I had also worked as a security guard at a college. Um, this was back when I was in New York. This is kind of around the same time. It was, like, a lot of back and forth going on. 
no this is before i moved to california i was working at a, as a security guard while i was working at the magazine place and i was a security for a performing arts college fell in love with this girl and it wasn't allowed to fraternize with the students so i couldn't really get close to her but i did put a photo shoot together just to get to know her i paid her and, and um left there nothing really happened there because back then i was way more shy um and uh but one of the things that stood out to me was i had a chance to meet steven spielberg for a shoot that i was curating for him but i had to leave and go to the security job and i wanted to be responsible and that was one of the moments where i realized like sometimes you can be responsible but then there are some moments where you got to drop the responsibility and go follow your heart and that's the moment that i probably should have and i did not do that so like there's a toss-up when it comes to that and i figured it out <laughs> so fast forward leaving there um now we're back in uh talking about uh california so i had my car and i was homeless for four months and i slept by um, pch by the beach right over there by um you know that malibu beach and i it was it was actually peaceful believe it or not um but that's when i became really humbled because it was like one time I smelled atrocious, I guess, because I had walked into a gas station and everybody on the line, the checkout line, backed up and huffed and puffed. Ugh, ugh. It was like so dramatic. Like, do you really have to back up that far from me? Like, okay. And <laughs> they really made me feel horrible. And that's the time when I realized I'm never going to make a homeless person feel like shit ever again because you don't know what they're going through. You don't know what that's like until you're in it. And so ever since then, I was extremely kind to them to the point that I gave some of them readings when I was homeless. Because when you're homeless in a car, the homeless people on the street look at you like you still have luxury. And I, I recognized that. I recognized that I didn't have it as bad as them. So I would give some of them readings. I would give some of them cigarettes. I would give them weed if I had it. I would give them food if I had it. Like I was holding them down, okay? <laughs> as much as I could, you know, to try to give back. And I realized that I was put in that situation to do that because every situation that you're put in, you're put there for a reason and you're put around those people for a reason as your assignments. And they were. And so I looked at life like that ever since. Like, okay, there's assignments everywhere you go. And then when you're done with your assignment, you go on to the next. And so when I um, left there, I moved with this woman who was a friend of mine who did shows, but she had a lot of mental illnesses. So I was her caretaker. But And that's when I had got my cat, um, which that's how I cured my cat allergies. Um, and this cat and I had a past life history of... Um, her being my daughter so even though she was an abused cat and she attacked me i decided to keep her because i was like i'm gonna fif i'm gonna fix this karmatic history that we have and i kept her as long as i could i spoiled her i painted her kennel pink i painted the inside blue i put roses on it i gave her a little plushy bed she traveled with me it was so cute like even though she was a little badass i still spoiled her and I gave her love, the love that she needed, and then I sent her on her way to a new home. Before that, I had two other cats. When I was in middle school, I had a cat named Beauty, but she had to go because she attacked me too. But I didn't let my cat get used to my home at the moment. I had let my friend at the time come downstairs, and she had cats. And when my cat smelled the scent of her cats on her, she went ape shit. And I was like, okay, you gotta go, I'm sorry. And then in um, high school in Florida, I had another cat named Lady that was given to me but then she was stolen so then i had to let her go so the cat that i was able to keep the little white one she was cute she was like a siamese adorable but with blue eyes um so she was a um i forgot what they called them but the white reddish siameses with the blue eyes and i named her wajet but i gave her a new home anyway so fast forward i had moved to vegas with um a friend of mine to go try to see how things would go out there and like you know get on my feet and i went to go inquire about breast implants because i want breast implants right and i had a few consultations and in this consultation i took out a credit check to see if i could finance them because i couldn't afford them knew i wasn't going to be able to do that but because i did that they found my car and towed it <laughs> because i wasn't paying the bills on time and so <laughs> i lost my car um my second car and I, ever since i haven't had one and i miss driving so much but you know we're gonna get that back we're gonna work towards that um but um so i was really really butthurt about that depressed for like three weeks <laughs> specifically my alter um who loves driving and um vaughn and which is the the uh the the addition to the altar of jesus but anyway <laughs> i'll do another video about that about like double altars um or extended altars so um 
that's the one who was the boppy with the ladies in college <laughs> so anyway <laughs> so um what you call it so i was um in vegas and then i was gonna try to work at another strip club but that didn't work out and then um i left vegas went to arizona stood with this woman who decided to tell me that she was god back when i didn't know i was god at the moment and she was completely lying to me but i didn't know that and i really believed her and she we went through this like four days of staying up and um doing this very hard drug <laughs> and it was dope but i um because you know, I believe sometimes that when you go on drug binges, that they can be very eye-opening and enlightening for you if you're around the right people and you're in the right mindset and you are spiritually in tune with messages that you need to receive at that moment to unguard yourself. And then when it's time to put that away for a moment, then you can put that away. Balance. Um, I don't mind doing things every day in moderation, and, but, and I don't mind binges, but I feel like everything has its time and place. So when I left Arizona, I left her house, I went to my aunt's house to wear her for a little bit. And then I went back to New York and then I still had my cat at the time. And then when I went to my sister's house, I had to find a new home for my cat because my cat was just getting out of control. And so then um, after that, I went to school for my metaphysics and I got my bachelor's and I got my metaphysics practitioner. And then I got my ordained license for my ministership. And then I did all that there. And then I was doing readings for 18 years, that whole time for free, bartering. And then I did... I started charging for the last three years and then um, I was no longer doing acting because that was in California and I was in New York at this time and but I still definitely missed it and wanted to go back to it but you know so I what happened I then I got with my child's father I had known I had known him for three years prior and when I got with him I moved to Maryland with him and to be with him and his family and we were staying in hotels and airbnbs and i wanted to get an apartment with him but i also wanted to move to california with him because he was doing music and he was he wanted to be a rapper and i wanted to go back to doing my acting and he was like not ready for california at the moment he wanted to have a baby in maryland first and i was like well i'll be willing to do this with you and then can we move there like i want to move back when we broke up it was because i had started to have feelings for someone else and i realized that i was going to feel like i was settling with him and i didn't know i was pregnant at the time because we were on a trying to conceive journey for a while and i had a few miscarriages because i had endometriosis at the time and i had to heal it with doing a yoni steam and it did and then that's when i was able to finally um conceive but by the time i conceived we had broken up and we were already separated and when i reached out to tell him he didn't hit me up so that's why he's not in my um, he's not in my child's life and I took that as a message and I didn't hit him up after that and he has not reached out either. Um, even though he did give my um, family my number at the time when I wasn't speaking to them without my permission, but there's that. So anyway, my family and I are in contact again. Thank goodness I did miss them and I'm happy about that. Um, so we, um, that's when around the time that we were together though, he did give me a very special birthday. I took him to meet my family. He went to see New York for the first time and um, he met my friends. And then when I went back to Maryland with him, my, my ex-best friend went back with us. We had a huge, horrible argument. And that's when she showed me who she really was. And then she looked like she was really trying to like end me. And then um, we never spoke since. And um, fast forward, um, when I went to... Um, I went back to Jer New York, but my family was living in Jersey, and then me and my sister had got into an argument around then, and then I had to leave, and then I had to go fend for myself and go to California with no money again and no car this time and figure things out, and I had to stay in different places. I was pregnant. Everyone that I stayed with knew that I was pregnant, and after two weeks, kicked me out. Um, they all knew who I was. I had learned who I was while I was with my ex-boyfriend, my child's father. And I was starting to put the pieces together as the months went on. I kept learning and learning and learning. And then when I stood with my friend, the very last friend that I stood with before I moved to Cal before I moved to San Francisco, because that was back when I had to go back to LA. Before I came to San Francisco, I had learned that I was God. And I was like, whoa, like this whole time, like the whole time, the whole time, the whole time, like in Miss Doubtfire. Like it was like one of those moments. <laughs> and so <laughs> And so I don't know if it was because of how I was speaking to them or they couldn't handle, they felt like I should be a little bit more um, like completely reserved and expressing things that they needed to know about themselves or like they could do better about themselves. But my whole purpose is to help you advance yourself, evolve yourself. And so when I'm in your presence and you are my assignment, 
um, I'm doing my job, I'm doing my purpose, and I'm doing what I came here to do. So if you don't receive that well, that's not my problem, and I, and I respect that, but I guess we just can't be around each other, and that's what that was. So then I had to go to San Francisco, which was the original place I wanted to move to when I wanted to go to California because of Charmed and Full House. So like, those are my shows, bruh. And so, but I ended up going to LA first. So I was like, you know what? It's time. Let me go to San Francisco. Let me have a new life. Thank goodness I did, because when I got to San Francisco, I went to... A hospital i was gonna check myself into a 72 hour stay in a psych ward and they was like you don't need to do that you don't need to stay here you're sane we're gonna put you in a mental health facility that's just gonna get you back on your feet and help you work through some things and then we're gonna put you i don't know what they were gonna do with me and then they ended up putting me into a prenatal program after that i stood there for four months and that's how i got this apartment i've been here for a whole year um it's time to move soon i don't know what i'm gonna do i don't know what's gonna happen with that but i'm praying for the best <laughs> um i recently put out a work resume um, the title is um, I was going to be a doctor because I was going to get my master's in metaphysics But I had to take a break from school um, So I stopped at the bachelor's but anyway, so yeah, you can peep that and see my work resume and all my credentials and everything <laughs> Hit me up. <laughs> so anyway um, I decided while I was here that I was gonna follow my dreams full-fledged again and pick up on where I left off when, when, my, when my body was a child and I took these singing lessons for a week and after that week let me tell you my voice opened honey and i was like yes thank goodness because <laughs> this is what i meant to do so and then i started dancing again and then i started to realize how much i missed music um before moving here the one time i had felt the beat again was when i was in maryland and ever since then moving out of there i felt like it had like left me but then i feel like i got everything back once i moved here and it's staying with me honey okay it's staying with me <laughs> no one can stop me now <laughs> so um uh, where is i gonna go with that so now yes here we are and then i was here i was pregnant for a minute obviously <laughs> my mom came here to help me with the labor i was gonna do a home birth um in the water i labored in the water but then i had to get rushed to the hospital i didn't know that um the umbilical cord was around my baby's head but i'm so glad she's here and she's alive and she's safe and um she's meant to be here too just like me and um we're both not going nowhere <laughs> and i am very um that's another reason why i'm very protective over her because she's like i said before she's very unique and um so anything that i do for work she's gonna have to be right next to me and we just i'm just trying to get her used to like you know being okay with that because she loves being in my arms all the time and I love like holding her and being there with her but it is getting a little overwhelming not being able to do more I, I know I can do a little bit more so we're working through it I'm getting her used to that um so I'm trying to see if there's anything else that I have left out no I'm glad because I could put this up in one swoop <laughs> so I hope that you enjoyed this video and um I am going to wish everyone a magical existence and um yeah later <laughs>